we've done research on every single film that I've made, and there's a huge amount of stuff around Peter Lou historically. But, you know, we had an extraordinary team of really intelligent, committed, creative people, and everything, right down to the smallest detail, researched and made. And you see, we all share the same commitment to detail, knowing that details together make the resonance that gives it makes it feel like real life. The subject deserves it to be, you know, as authentic as possible, which is what we try to do. The idea is that this is a peaceful gathering of people to demand their rights. I tend to coordinate and help and stand to one side and make suggestions and bring in particular experts for the actors. It's just very good to know that you've got somebody with all that knowledge in her head like there and available to you all the time. Thank you. If ever a hand was put up, the question usually started with, Jackie, do you think? She seemed to have an inexhaustible supply of knowledge. Dr Jacqueline Riding is principally an art historian and did Mr Turner. She knows not only how to research and where to research, but how to help each individual participant. A lot of the credit should go to people like the art department who do their own research, costume, etc. But also with the actors, they are so keen wanting to know about the period, but also specifically about their own character. So some of them in digging and finding information, I don't think anybody knew. Poetry. I found his poetry. He published a book of poetry, including some slightly saucy poetry uh, to his wife. Bound up. As we were reading all the stories from the time of what happened, people were describing these banners that people arrived with to state what they were protesting that day. So from there we started putting together the kind of different techniques that they use, so a mixture of painting and applique. There's one banner that still exists from the Peterloo Massacre and the story goes that it was saved by somebody wrapped it up and hid it under their dress and ran away with it and it's, um, it's been looked after in this kind of icon of, of that day. Now then, first stop will be Sam Ogden's tap house in our parade. Yay! And then, on to Manchester. Yay! And liberty! Yay! And action. Manchester nowadays is completely built up. Little bits still remain, but not enough for us to use as our a backdrop. So our Manchester world was a composite of various locations across the country. We travelled all around basically trying to pick appropriate places. Manchester, like many places, back at the beginning of the 19th century and indeed at the end of the 19th century, like London, still had a lot of Elizabethan half timbered buildings which have long since disappeared. So we shot in Lincoln, which was useful from that point of view. We were on the Yorkshire Lancashire borders. We shot in a mothballed mill in Burnley, which is technically a museum. And the guys that knew how to operate those machines, all came out to make it real and to make it appropriate. And then we come to St Peter's Field itself, which was shot at Tilbury, which is an ancient fort down by the docks. We're right on the banks of the River Thames. This fort was built here to defend the river. Firstly, it was built by King Henry VIII to defend the river against Catholic invaders. But what's here today was built by King Charles II in 1670 and has had upgrades over time. What we'd looked for was a Georgian square in England that we could take over for Mike to film in. So the location manager and myself spent quite a few months looking across the whole of the country and we kept coming back to Tilbury because there's a certain amount of architecture here already that we could enhance. It's a private space, we can have it to ourselves. So it just started manifesting that how's about we build a street within this environment. St Peter's Field was a sort of bit of rough ground which had started to be built around and formed into a sort of square, but it's not a formal square that we would think of it. It was very much a square piece of land, rough land, which was starting to be built on. So as you can see here, there was buildings around the edge of it, but in fact, it was being leveled off to actually start building onto it. And it's a place where, because of its sheer scale, and the fact it was slightly enclosed, it was a good space for folk to walk to, to, to gather for events. Yeah, like that. When we first went to Silbury Fort, I was really worried that we could pull off what we were trying to achieve in that in that fort. It was a windswept, bleak place that, for me, it had very little photographic resonance. But hats off to everybody concerned. I mean, it has its own life, it lives, and it's in Petersfield, Manchester, with 60,000 people. So that is the magic of cinema. Let's see what he has to say, eh? Let's see what he has to say. 
It has to be said that the team of people that made Peter Lou on both sides of the camera were immaculate and impeccable. Right across the board, the organisational people, the creative people, entered into the spirit of the thing, did their research. It was very, very solid and committed. And without them, you couldn't do any of this at all. Gentlemen! Friends! Oh! Riot Act, Mr. Ethelston, I shall bear your witness.